Hi, boys and girls. I'm sitting outside on my deck here at home, enjoying this beautiful sunshine that we've been waiting for. I hope that you get outside and enjoy some sunshine today, too. I'm so glad you could be here with us. I am Starly, and I just wanted to spend some more time together talking about Jesus. I uh, was thinking, we just came through Easter. And now uh, we're all kind of at home, you know, maybe having a break from all our schoolwork. And, and uh, I was thinking about how when Jesus rose from the dead and uh, first Mary saw him and, and then he, uh, he came and, he, and a bunch of other people saw him. It wasn't just one person or two people. Lots of people saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. And uh, I always wonder about what that time was like walking with someone that you knew was gone and, and uh, that you thought that was the end and then they're back. How amazing that would have been for, for all of his friends and for all the people who got to see him. And uh, one of my favorite characters is, is Thomas. Sometimes he's called Doubting Thomas, and, and he wasn't sure about, about Jesus being alive again, even though everyone was, tell was telling him that it really did happen. Uh, Thomas had doubts. He wondered. And you know, sometimes we have doubts too. And the wonderful thing about our God is that He doesn't mind our doubts. He wants to meet us in those doubts. He wants to answer the questions that we have, the things that we're not sure about. And he meets us with the Holy Spirit who gives us faith and understanding and things that we can't explain with words. And, uh, and he speaks to our hearts. And he makes that connection between our brains and our hearts and helps us to understand the things that are sort of not of this world, right? The things that are, um, the things that are unseen. And it's an exciting thing. So I thought today we would uh, open up our Jesus Storybook Bible and we would read about the story of, uh, that took place after Jesus rose from the dead and he had spent some time on the earth with the children uh, of God and, and with his friends and, uh, and had told them about what they were supposed to do from now until it was time for him to come back. So this is a story called Going Home. I hope you can see it. The sun's shining really bright, so I can barely see the screen on my computer. It says, Jesus' friends were afraid. Of course they were afraid because they had just watched Jesus die on the cross. So they were hiding in an upstairs room with, one of the, with the door bolted shut. But that didn't stop Jesus. He walked straight through the wall. It's a ghost, Thomas screamed, and he hid under the table. But it wasn't a ghost. I'm hungry, Jesus said. What's for lunch? So Peter gave him a fish, and they all hung back and watched him eat it. This can't be, they were telling themselves. It's impossible. It's not happening. But it was happening. And it was happening right in front of them. Mmm, delicious fish. Jesus wiped his mouth with the back of his hand and grinned. Can a ghost do that? He winked, and they all laughed. I'm really here, Jesus said. And he really was. Peter's heart left with joy. And he fell into Jesus' arms, hugging him, and all the others followed, and their hearts felt like they could just burst with happiness. The friends ate together and chatted happily, and every now and then they would just gaze at Jesus and, and have to touch him to be sure that they weren't dreaming. Jesus had a real body, but this body was better. It had come through death, and it couldn't be sick or killed. This body would live forever. Jesus had come back with a brand new body. That's something that we get to look forward to too, boys and girls, when, when our bodies here on earth die. We do, through faith in Jesus, get to go to heaven and receive a new body. Not only were the sad things coming untrue, the friends realized that they were becoming new again. Was God going to make everything new? And he was. Jesus said, I am the savior and the rescuer of the world. And they knew because he couldn't stay dead because Jesus had come alive again, and that somehow everything was going to be all right. A few days later, they walked together, and Jesus told his friends, it's time for me to go home to my father. They all looked worried, and I can only imagine how that felt. Wait a second, Jesus, we just got you back. You can't leave again. We're not going to be okay without you here. But he had a plan. Jesus told them, they all looked worried, and then he, they remembered what Jesus had told them before he died. There's a place for you. I'm going to go get it ready, Jesus said. And guess what? You know the way there. Thomas panicked. I, I don't know how to get there. I don't know the way. Yes, you do, Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. When at last they reached the top of the highest hill near Jerusalem, Jesus turned to them and said, Go everywhere and tell everyone the happy news. Tell them that I love them so much that I died for them. It's the truth that overcomes the terrible lie. That terrible lie that 
the enemy tries to tell us that God doesn't love us, it's not true. God loves all his children. Yes, he really does. Suddenly the whole sky was filled with dazzling light. Not everyone can come home to God, Jesus said. Death is not the end. It's not the end of the story. Not for Jesus, not for you, not for me, and not for our families and our friends. It's not the end of the story. You can live forever with your Father in heaven because I have rescued the whole world. Jesus made a way where there was no way. And we know the way to get there. And then something amazing happened. Jesus rose up into the bright air, higher and higher. They shaded their eyes and watched them until the cloud hid Jesus so they couldn't see him anymore. They stood looking up into the sky for a long time, and then suddenly two shining men appeared. What are you doing? they asked. Jesus had gone up to heaven, but one day he will come back in the same way you saw him leave from heaven and from the sky. Jesus' friends went back to Jerusalem with a strange gladness in their hearts, and something Jesus said stuck in their minds. Even though you won't be able to see me anymore, I will never leave you. No, not ever. I will be with you. Yes, always and forever. How can Jesus be with us and leave us at the same time, they wondered. They didn't understand. No, but soon they would. We'll read a new, another story next week, boys and girls, but some of you might already know that the way God is with us, even though Jesus isn't physically here on the earth the way that he was then, is through the Holy Spirit. Our God is so wonderful and big and amazing that he actually has three parts that make the one, one God, and it is the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus actually told his friends that it was better that he leave and go back to heaven to get a place ready for us than it was for him to stay because he was going to send a helper, the Holy Spirit. And that is who we have right now. We have God with us all the time, everywhere. There's nowhere we can go where God isn't with us. And there's no place we can hide where God can't find us. He's always ready and waiting and just and hoping that we will take the time to spend with him, to talk to him, to thank him for the wonderful blessings he's given us and to bring him the things that are on our hearts. God is always with us, listening and waiting and hoping that you'll just take a minute to notice. I know, boys and girls, one of the ways that I always feel closest to God is when I read his word. It's like his love letter to me and to you and tells us his plans and that they are good and that we can trust in him because he doesn't change. Another way that I love spending time with God is when I listen to worship music and sing to God. And sometimes their words fill in all the words that I don't know how to say and I don't know what, how to put them together. And another way that I love to spend time with God is just being outside. So now that God has blessed us with this beautiful sunshine and this, this weather that just makes us feel like we're wrapped up in a nice warm blanket, uh, one way you can spend time with God is just to go out and be in the creation that he made for us to enjoy. He made this whole world for us. He says, here it is. I made it all for you. Look at how beautiful and wonderful it is. So t take some time today. Look at that beautiful blue sky. Feel that warm sun shining on your skin and know that God is with you that he loves you and he just longs to spend time with you because you are his child and you are special and uh, and he didn't make any mistakes with you. He loves you just the way you are. So take some time today, boys and girls. I just bless your spirits uh, just to rise up, to know who you are in Christ, that uh, he died for you, that he loves you, that you are forgiven from all the wrong things that you'll ever do and uh, and that he just longs to have a friendship with you. He just wants to be your friend and walk with you through this life, no matter what it brings. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the truth in your word. Thank you for sunshine. And thank you for all the boys and girls that will listen to your words today and know that you love them. I pray that you will bless them with joy and smiles and laughter and just a knowing of who you are and how much you love them. I ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care and be safe. Bye for now.